namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma stang buddhassa namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sang buddhassa namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sang buddhassa sadu sadu Okay, <clears throat> so a very good afternoon, uh, Namo Buddhaya. So now we come back to our last two lessons here today. So we hope to cover today the Morra Paritta and another one is the Vata Paritta. Okay, so these two suttas and these two, uh, they are the Paritta, right? Protective verses. So before we look at the Morra Paritta, right, we look at, you know, the purpose of uh, these suttas and why we have the Chinese suttas and for what purpose. <clears throat> uh, you know, in our Buddhist tradition, particularly in Myanmar tradition, right there, Chinese moral suttas, you know, mainly to protect the people, uh, you know, from the snares, right? Or say, if arrested, you know, by enemies, so-called, right, then he can be released uh, safely. <clears throat> okay, so, so there is a, a story behind, right? And this moral parita is from the Jataka text, okay, from the Buddha Ginnikaya. So in this, in one of these uh, Jataka stories, it says that, you know, once the Buddha was residing at the Jetavana Monastery, right? He delivered the Jataka stories about the golden pickle, you know, the mora is a pickle, <clears throat> who was a bodhisattva. And he related these stories, you know, to one of his disciples who had been enchanted by a woman. <clears throat> and the story is, is like this, you know, at one time, uh, you know, a golden pickle, right, who was a bodhisattva, who lived in the Himalaya mountain. Then in the morning, while watching the sunrise, the peacock chanted <laughs> the divine okay, mantra. Uh, you know? <clears throat> yeah, of course, I think some of you may have doubts hmm? in Theravada, in Pali, we have mantra, yeah? <laughs> yeah indeed, if you look at our Pali traditions, you see like in Thailand, oh, they will say that, okay, I chant mantra for you, you see? But, you know, some people will say that, is, is that mantra in Pali tradition? Right? I think this is something that a lot of people are uh, curious about. So then after that, you know, after chanting, uh, then the peacock went about, you know, searching for food. Then again in the evening, right, at the sunset, then, you know, the peacock also did the same, you know, chant, uh, you know, this more parita, uh, this, uh, this, this so-called mantra, and he went to sleep. Uh. Then one day, the queens came up uh, of Varanasi. He dreamed that he heard a pickle uh, giving, you know, a discourse. Then she requested the king, right, to bring the pickle, you know, to the palace so that she could listen to the doctrine. Then the king sent, you know, the hunter to catch the pickle. And because of the protective, you know, the power of this moral parita, right? Then the trap would not work. Then for seven years, right, the hunters, you know, still could not succeed. Then of course, later on he died, and then the queen's also death, right? Then the king was very angry with the pickle. He made an inscription, right, saying that whosoever would eat the flesh of the pickle would be young and always, what they call, immortal, right, non death. Then, of course, after this inscription, you know, several successive rulers of the kingdom attempted, you know, to capture the pickle, but all were in vain. Then it says that the seven successors to the king sent a very clever hunter who had a charming, uh, what do you call, female pickle, and who could, and uh, which could sing very sweetly. Then, early one morning, the hunter, you know, set up a snare with a female pickle in front of the pickle. Then, then <laughs> the pickle was tempted. 
then they approach her, you know, without chanting the mantra and was caught in a snare. Then, of course, the hunter was very happy, you know, presented the, the peacock to the king. And the king was very delighted, of course, at the peacock beauty. Then the peacock, curious, is he asked the king why he was caught. Then the king said, you know, the former king left an inscription saying that whosoever eat its flesh could be young and always immortal. Then the peacock, you know, said in his previous life, because of his observation, right, of five precepts strictly, and be, as a result, you know, his body became, you know, golden in color. So then the stories of the peacock's previous life were explained, right, in details. And of course, by the power of the divine mantra, then the king was very pleased, you know. Then later on, the king, you know, released a peacock. Uh, to the Himalaya mountain. So this is basically the backgrounds of the Mora Parita. Okay. So of course, uh, you can recite the Mora Paritas, right? Uh, as, uh, you know, to protect yourself from, you know, what you call uh, the, the snare, or even some people try to poison you, right? And you can, you are protected somehow. Okay. And of course, you know, Theravada, Theravada tradition, right? It says that, you know, all this parita chanting is, is like a kind of, uh, what do you call, like a kind of mantra, right? Protecting you from dangers or any harms, okay? And of course, there are quite a number of suttas, you know, and they are called parita suttas and each one have a different function, right? So this one, more paritas, is to protect you from the snare, okay? And protect you from the danger. And the next one, we will look at the water paritas, okay? Then after water parita, we will look at the Atanatiya suttas, okay? I find it very interesting also Atanatiya suttas because uh, this is the strongest, you know, the suttas to dispel you, you know, from the, the attack or from the harass of the yaksha, okay? So... What we call, you know, if people got uh, haunted uh, by spirits, you see. So usually, you know, the, there are a few suttas that we can use. Huh? So we will, you know, look at it. I find it very interesting. <clears throat> okay. Now, before we start, okay, so let us uh, recite. Okay. The parita. Okay, this more parita. Okay, sorry. <clears throat> Okay. Udeta yang chakuma eka raja Hare savano bata vipa baso Tang tang namasami Hare savana bata vipa baso Taya jagut ta vihare mudivasam Ye Brahmana Vedagu Sapadame Te Me Namo Te Chama Palayandum Namatu Buddhana Namatu Bodhya Namo Vimutana Namo Vimutya Imam so paritang katua moro charati esanang. Ape tayang chakuma eka raja hari savano patavipa basong tang tang namasami hari Savana patave pabasang Taya jagota vihare morating Ye brahmana vedago sapadame Te me namo te chema palayantum 
นามาตุบุตรดานังนามาตุบดียังนโมวิโมตานังนโมวิโมติยังอิมังโสปารีตังกัตวะมโรวะสังอากาปะยิตสาดุสาดุสาดุโอเค so as usual right in our uh, Pali reading class right we will start with the vocabulary okay there are vocabulary and followed by the syntax analysis and the literal translation okay so as you know that we are dealing with verse you see to analyze verse is not easy and of course by looking at the verse uh, you you really have to know what the, the context are you see if you don't understand it of the context you find it very difficult to translate one thing is because in the you know in these verses you see uh, use a lot of, a lot a lot of adjective okay describing something okay so we have to understand you know what are the meanings behind you know with all these adjective describing the subject or object okay so in this case it start with uh, you know chakuma okay chakuma right you look at the chakuma right the chakuma right it's from the chakuman chaku we know is eyes chaku is eye man is a possessive suffix okay so when this man added to chaku it becomes it, it means one who, uh, who is having eyes okay in this case right but in this moral characters here the chakuma refer to sun okay refer to sun okay so if you don't understand this are uh, you really don't understand you know what all these you know the translation okay so this chakuma is one having eyes me referred to the sun so this is an adjective describing the sun and of course in this case chakuma here is a sun right and the ute tayang right this is a compound right you now due to the euphonic combination uh, you have the ude ti and ayang so this i ude ti this i was is uh, deleted right that's why you had ude taya so anyway in our analysis we have to split it ude ti and ta and ayang so ude ti is a verb right it's a third person singular right like in this case i would say the ut and e mean to go up right when you say to go up something to go up mean rises right so there rises okay then this i am is a demonstrative pronoun right this okay this and ekka raja ekka raja ekka and raja right and this raja is from the the rajan right from the king so it's a nominative singular so the sole king or the one king right uh, one king and someone asked me why it is a one king because it is only one sun in the sky. Sky, right i mean in our is this so uh, we call it ekaraja so this is also adjective describing the chakuma and hari savanna is from hari and savanna right and you look at double s is because one s is duplicated is it due to this euphonic combination right so hari savanna mean golden color and patawi pabahaso Right, this is also the same thing. You had the double double P here. One P is duplicated. That is also because of euphonic combination. So the patawi pabhaso. Pabhaso means shining. Patawi means earth. So again, you had to interpret this, right? So the shining all over the earth, right? Okay. So now we analyze the, the sentence. Huh? So now. In this case, I split all the Sunday. That's why you find Udeti, Ayam, Chakuma, Ekaraja, Harisavano, but the Vipabhaso. So I underline, right? Now you see, first we analyze the verb Udeti, the person singular. 
When it is a third person singular, you expect the subject is a nominative singular, right? So here the chakuma is nominative singular. Okay. And here, and then ayam is a is a pronoun, right? And it's also nominative singular. And this is adjective to the chakuma. So you can translate like uh, you know, this sun. Okay, this sun, this, or literally like this having eyes. Okay, it means, uh, you know, having eyes mean the sun that give eyes to the creatures to see, right? If there is no sun, then we can't see anything, isn't it? So the, the sun is like, you know, it's shining over, right? It's giving eyes for creatures being, you know, to see, right? So you have the word like chakuma. And okay, yeah, or oh, there rises. This having eyes, okay, this having eyes. They said so this is an adjective describing having eyes, right? But of course, if you translate having eyes, nobody knows what is this, what having eyes is, right? That's why we make eye, sun, which give eyes to the creatures to see. Then ekaraja. Right, it's also a nominative singular, harisavano. Right, it's also adjective to chakuma. Okay, and then harisavano is also adjective to chakuma. Okay, then the same one also patawi pabhaso to chakuma. So you see, the chakuma here, the sun, that has all these function, all these attributes. So you see, when I translate, which is uh, so this is adjective, right? Uh, the soul king in a golden color and shining all over the earth. Okay. So it's very straightforward. Okay. But you, anyway, you can interpret what is this chakuma, right? If you don't understand chakuma, the whole sentence doesn't make sense to you. Okay. And of course, when someone asks what is soul king, you can interpret it, right? You can interpret it. <clears throat> Okay, the next. Tang tang namasami harisavana patavi pabhasang tayajagutta viharemu divasang. Right, and you had the tang tang. You look at this tang tang, you know, the first tang is an adverb, the second tang is accusative. Okay, so the first one, adverb, means in regard to this. Right, and the second one tongue is accusative. Okay, accusative means the object of a verb. Okay, so here the verb is namasami, namasami. Right, we have we come across this verb namasami. All right, uh, okay, namas namasami is, is is denominative. Okay, I hope by now you you know what is denominative, right? Denominative is the verb derived from noun. Okay, derived from noun. So the noun is namas, homage. All right. So you turn into a verb. It means I pay homage. It become a, it become a verb already. I venerate, right? Then you see, I worship it, or I venerate it. Okay. Of course, here the it referred. Right? And then you have the harisavana is also accusative. But we pabhasa also same thing we have seen. And tayajagutta is from taya and acha. Okay. So this is also due to euphonic combination, you know, it's combined. Taya, taya is instrumental. Right? By you, acha is an adverb today or now. And then another one, gutta. Gutta. Gutta is like matar. A pitar, right? Those ending with r, right? Or in Sanskrit called tr, right? So good ta or good tr, right? So this tr ending is the uh, agent noun. Okay, so it means that like good ta is one who guards or observe, or just simply you can translate like you know a guardian, right? Then of course it has another meaning, uh, in the sense of past participle mean protected. Right, but in our translation, we take it as an agent noun, huh? mean a guardian. Viharemu is optative, 
right? First person, plural. I mean, we might live, right? So this is the meaning. Huh? And divasa is accusative, but used as an adverb, right? So for whole day, for whole day, for whole day. Okay. So now we look at the translation. Okay. So first, look at the verb. It's a first person singular, right? The root, right? Okay. It's a, it's a, it's a denominative. And then here, tang is accusative, right? Accusative. Uh, of course, here tang refer to the sun. Okay, the sun here, the sun. And then harisavana, <clears throat> you know, patavipa bahasa. They are all adjective to tang. That's why when it is adjective to tang, it qualifies. It's agree with the masculine, right? A case and the number. Okay, <clears throat> and then same one also pata vipa bahasa, also adjective to the tongue. You see, so nothing left, right? <laughs> left behind. So the translation would, in regard to this, okay, tongue, I pay respect to it. Yeah, it may refer to the sun, which is golden colored and shining all over the earth. Okay. Now you got a whole, whole, whole translation, right? So it's very uh, straightforward. Taya adja gutta viharemu divasang. Okay, verb viharemu is authentic first person plural. Okay, and the gutta is a subject, right? It's a nominative singular. Guttar, right? Adja adverb. Taya instrumental and divasa adverb. So you see, good uh, time. Okay, good time. Being a guardian, right? By you, Taya. Okay? We will lift safely the whole day. We will lift, right? Uh, we, should, we will live safely the whole day. You see, the whole day here is an adverb. Okay? So you, you see, you see the translation here. Okay, I hope that makes sense to you. So this is how you know when we analyze the structures like this, then we come up with the translation. Okay, so this translation is a very literal translation. So the sun is a protector, <laughs> it seems. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Ye Brahmana Vedagu Sapa Dhamme Teme Namo Techa Mang Palayantu. Okay, so you have the Ye and Te. Okay, so this is a relative pronoun like those who and Te. Okay, but of course here, right? And then you have the Brahmana Vedagu Sapa Dhamme. Okay, the Brahmana. <clears throat> you see the Brahmana. You see this Brahmana is. If you look at this Brahmana, right, it's one of, this is the highest caste of the four caste system in India, right? You had a Brahmana, you know, and you had a Khatiya, and you had a Vesa, and then you had a Shudra. Okay, so uh, the Brahmana is the highest caste, and they are responsible, you know, to, to perform, uh, what you call responsible to communicate with the God. Right, chant the verses, uh, you know, and or, and perform all kind of rites and rituals, right? So, but of course, in Buddhism, right, we do use the Brahmana, but in the case of the Buddhist studies, right, the Brahmana not referred to the 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 the, the, the caste, referred here to the Buddha or even referred to the Arhat. Okay, uh, so you have to understand. Then Veda Gu. Veda, of course, Veda means, you know, knowledge of Vedas. It means that, uh, you know, one who excel in the knowledge of Vedas, okay? And Sabadhamme. Sabadhamme, right, is a locative, okay? Sab and Dhamme. So this is a compound, right? Sab all Dhamme. So in all Dhamma. Okay, and then you, what else you have? Namo, of course. Uh, is for namas, the salutation, 
Balayandu is imperative, right? The present plural, balmi to protect. So may they protect. Okay, so this is basically the vocabulary. Now, okay, we translate. Okay, so first, <clears throat> look at verb. Any verb here? Yes. Okay. Oh, I should go to the palayantu. <laughs> but anyway, okay. Uh, you look at the first part, right? Ye Brahmana. Vedagu, right? Is the plural adjective to this? Ye is adjective to this, to Brahmana. Sapadame is locative, <clears throat> right? So the Brahmins, okay? As uh, Brahmin, nominated plural. In black, I arahats. Or even you can put Buddhas, uh, no problem. Okay. Are those, okay? Those is because of gear, right? Are those who excel in all dharmas, excel in all dharmas. Or if you take it like that, also you can say those uh, Brahmins are, ex those Brahmin, uh, right? Who excel in all dharmas. Okay, so depending how you, you translate. Okay. So, so the Brahmins are those who excel in all the Hamas, right? In all the Hamas. And then next, Palayantu. Hey, you see? Teme Namo Te Che. You see, when you have the Che here, okay, usually you have to split it, right? So it means that this is a close, right? Close. So you have to translate this close first, right? So, so Namo, you know, Me. You see, it's a genitive, right? Te is accusative plural, right? Then my homage, right? Or the salutation of me, okay? Uh, to them, right? This is simply my homage to them, okay? My homage to them. Te me namo, right? My homage to them. You see, when you have te, then you have to put a comma, N, right? You translate N. Palayantu. Okay. And then the subject is T. And then Ma is uh, accusative. Okay. Then N. You see, when I put, I translate N. Yeah. It's because of Ch here. N. Palayantu. May they protect D is because of T. Right. Here. Uh, the person plural. Protect me. So Brahmin are those who excel in all dharma. Mahomesh to them and may they protect me. <laughs> so when I look at this verse, uh, this, this kind of, uh, this pattern, these structures of uh, uh, what they call, you know, uh, chanting is very similar to the mantra. <laughs> okay, I don't know whether you know mantra. And those who are well versed in the Mahayana mantra, you see, uh, you see their structure is also like that. A lot of homage, a lot of salutation, and pay homage to this, pay homage to that. So this form, this structures is is um, is very uh, what they call um, mantra style. <laughs> okay, uh, <clears throat> because when I was a young time, when I was still a young monk. Uh, I was interested, you know, in this kind of mantra because when I was young time, people said, uh, you know, uh, you know, mantra cannot be translated. You cannot comprehend the mantra. You know, you just recite mantra as it is. And, you know, from young, we know uh, if you recite mantra, you, are, you, are, you felt that you are protected. Okay. So this is what when we were young, you know, learn about. Then later on, you know, after becoming a monk, you know, with a little knowledge of Sanskrit and Pali, then I start investigate further, you know, I want to know what are the meaning of these mantras, you know. Then at that time, of course, I asked a lot of people, you know, for help and a lot of people still, they said, oh, better don't translate, yeah, better don't translate. But of course, uh, out of curiosity, in fact, I have translated most of the Mahayana texts. Uh, particularly all the Mahayana mantras, you see. And that was, I think, about 20, over 20 years ago. <laughs> and, you know, when I, I read it, our Pali, 
protective verses, also very similar to that style. Okay, very similar to that song. But of course, in most of the Mahayana mantras, you know, they, they reside in what we call the transliteration. Okay, it means that the text originally is in the Sanskrit. Okay, it's in the Sanskrit form. Okay, and then of course, I look at the Sanskrit. And of course, at that time, not many, you know, at that time, I find it very hard to get the original copy of Sanskrit. In fact, there is no copy. Uh, there is no copy at all. So my effort is to restore. In a way, it's like restoration, you see, from the Chinese into the Sanskrit. So I did that, you see. So I find it uh, very, very happy, you know. And I have uh, translated all these things. Now when I look back, our Pali, <laughs> so-called, uh, you know, these protective paritas, it's also similar to that, uh, very similar to structures, and the use of word also quite similar. Okay. Uh, next, uh, Namatu Buddhana. This one is exactly the same. Namatu Buddhana, Namatu Bodhiya, Namovimutana, Namovimutiya, Imangso Paritang Katua, Moro Charati Esana. This, this style, this structure is very similar to Sanskrit. Okay. And I have to admit that it's very similar. Uh, but of course, uh, you know, Chinese, Chinese, they don't recite Sanskrit. You see, they will recite a transliteration. Okay. But uh, we are very lucky. Yeah. At least we are able to, you know, read and analyze from the original Sanskrit or from the Pali into English or into Chinese. So, you know, to understand better, you know, what is the meaning behind. Um, okay, so Namatu, we have seen this, is from Namo and Atu. Okay, Namo Atu. So it's of course due to, you know, euphony, you see the combination. So uh, all is elated, all right? So it becomes Namatu, right? So we had to split it. So the Atu is imperative, the person singular. And Buddhana, you see, is in the genitive, but used as a dative. Right to the Buddhas and body uh, is from body, right? Body, body is a feminine noun and a genitive to enlightenment. It means that here to refer to the enlightenment of the Buddha, okay? The Sama Sambuddha, uh, Samya or Sama Sambuddha. Uh, and then Vimuttana, Vimuttana is from Vimutta. Vimutta is a past participle. Past participle, you are referring one who has. What do you call liberated from you know abandoning of all defilements, right? It means that who has become free from all the bondage. Okay, so it's a PPP. And then we muti, uh, right? It's from we muti. We muti is a noun, feminine noun. So referred to emancipation. And this, when you talk about the emancipation, it's very interesting because in the commentary here, talk about five types of five types of liberation, okay? Uh, liberation or emancipation or deliverance, uh, we mokti. And okay, so now we look at uh, what are these five types of we mokti as mentioned in the Jataka Atakata. It says that uh, when one delivered from the unhosted, um, uh, you see, delivered, what do you call, uh, liberated from the unwholesome state, uh, unwholesome state of mind. Like one who delivered from you know the greed, hatred, and delusion, right? By cultivating the generosity, by observing the, the precepts, or by cultivating the bhavana. You see, so you know, if you practice like this, you are free, you know, from these unwholesome states of mind. So, this is one of the definitions, you know, of the vimukti. Then another meaning of vimukti is delivering from the hindrance. Here the hindrance referred to Panchanivarana, five hindrances, okay? As you know, in a meditation, right? We cannot progress, right? We cannot attain the concentration. That is because, you see, we were hindered by the hindrances, okay? So I think, you know, what are these five hindrances? So you see, even ordinary people, you see, when they cultivate, Right, overcoming these five hindrances, 
eventually, you know, they will get into the concentration. And this kind of liberation doesn't mean you have to be an arahat or to be a saint. Even by ordinary people, you practice hard, you also can achieve a temporarily what I call uh, liberation. At least you are liberated from temporarily, right? From these five hindrances. So this is a second understanding of the Vimukti. And the third one, right? You are talking about the liberation from the defilements, uh, what do you call? Mm -hmm. uh, defilements abandonable through the seeing. Okay, when we talk about the defilements, we talk about two types of defilement or two, two types of defilement. You see, there is one type of defilements to be abandoned through the path. Okay, I call it the path of seeing. It means that to the path of the vipassana. Okay, and what is the purpose of vipassana to see things as is it is right? So to see, you know, the the, the real nature of reality, you know, that of. Uh, impermanent, that of suffering, that of non-self, right? So it means that, you see, so once we see true, okay, once we abandon, you know, this starts of defilements, right? We, all, we get into the, what they call, you know, the path, okay? And become the Shotopana monk, Pala. So this is also one type, but of course, this, this one referred to the Superman then already. Okay, then there is another type of defilement, as I said, is aban defilements abandonable through the part of cultivation. What is mean when you talk about part of cultivation? They, they're giving you, a, okay, to be repeatedly cultivated. So it means that there's a type of defilement that had to be repeatedly cultivated, like the greed, hatred, and delusion. Okay, so even when you become an Astrotopana, right? You still have a very subtle types of development that yet to be further counteracted. Okay, that's why you have to continue uh, until you become an arahat. Okay, so the arahat is the last one. <laughs> it means that you are liberating liberation from all the sankara. It means that you are no more, you know, uh, you know, creating a new karma, right? So it means that. You have attained a complete cooling down. Okay, that is Nibbana. So when you talk about the liberation, you know, there are these five types of liberation. Okay. Okay, Imam, uh, Parita. Okay, Parita, you know, the protection of uh, Parita. And Katua is a jurin having done, right? Moro, Piko. Okay, Moro is a Piko. Charati, that person's English, Char. Right, verbs, char. Char has two meanings. One is to walk around, okay? One is practice, okay? So you have these two meanings. But of course, here referred to the bird, so it must walk, okay? Or move around for food. Esana, longing for food, okay? Uh, okay, now, now we look at this. Huh? Nama, namo atu buddha, nam, namo atu bodhiya. Namo vimutana, namo vimutia. This is very uh, Sanskrit. This is very mantra style. <laughs> okay. Atu. Imperative, the person singular, right? So here the subject. Huh? Homage. Buddhana. Okay. Genitives of to the Buddhas. So it's the up to imperative. To let there be homage to the blessed one. Okay. Uh, let there be homage to. But sometimes people just ignore it. Uh, just say homage to the blessed one. That is also okay. But since we are translating literally, so we keep it like this. Uh, let there be homage to the blessed one. Let there be is because of up to. Yeah? Homage is namo to the blessed one is Buddha. Okay. But I have seen, you know, uh, the, the, the Polish translation, they just cut it off. Homage to the blessed one is clear enough. Okay. So, Namo, Atu, Bodhi, also same thing, right? Okay. Do. So, let there be homage 
to the supreme enlightenment of the Buddhas. Okay. Namo Vimuttana. Same thing also. They just they just understood that too. Right. So let there be homage to those. Right, because it's Vimukta, PPP, right? Past participle to those who have become free from bondage or who have become liberated. Okay, so this is Vimukta. And Namo Vimuttiya. Right, so let there be homage to the emancipation. Okay, emancipation or liberation. Or or purification or whatever it is depending on the context okay imang so paritang kato is a kato is a jaren okay so if there is a jaren we, we we translate this close person uh parita is accusative yeah ima also right so this is it a protective right having made having made okay or having done this protection okay having done this protection you can see it's very literal translation right charati is a third person singular and then the, the subject is moral right and then you have so here so it to make it a very definite that's why you have the, the peacock right the peacock is make it a definite Right. Or you can say that, you know, otherwise you just take it like he or she, you know, that uh, he, that kind of meaning, a he, masculine. And esana is an object, okay, plural, longing. So the, the pico, right, the pico moves around, charity, longing, okay, esana. Of course, in Malaysia, it's understood for food. Okay. So I hope uh, this one is clear to you. Right, it's very clear to you. So, okay, so we go on the huh? next one. And ape tayang, you see here is ape, this one is upe, right? Now it's ape, ape tayang, ape ti, this one is upe ti. So, chakuma eka raja harisavano pata vipabha. So, you see, more or less the same, but here the difference is ape tayang, it's from ape ti and ayang, ape ti. Okay, so apet is from up, right? It's a prefix, right? With e, e means to go, to go away, right? Up means away, right? To go away, so disappear, or just to descend, right? It's, it's, it's slowly, you know, coming down, it's slowly disappearing, right? So you are referring to the sunset, right? And the rest are the same. Huh? Okay, so I split the sandy, <clears throat> apet. Okay, here the explanation. Huh? Their descent, okay. I think descent is better word. Their descent, uh, the descent. This having eyes, right? This having eyes, of course, I had to interpret it. Sun, which give eyes to the creatures, right? To see, and the rest are similar, which is Ekaraja, which is Harisavano. And which is Patavipa Bahaso, right? So, which is a soul king, golden colored, and shining all over the earth. Okay, so it's clearly referred to the sun, huh? no doubt. Huh? <clears throat> so, this, this kind of uh, chakuma is very poetic. Huh? Uh, in fact, you, you also can use uh, you know, the sun like a surreal, you see. But, uh, but anyway, you see. Uh, uh, but we are dealing with these poems. You see, so poems sometimes have to be poetic enough. Huh? Uh, okay. Here also the same thing, but the difference is rutting. Okay. Tang tang namasami harisavana patavipabhasang tayajagutta viharemu rutting. Right. So the rutting is adverb the whole night. Uh, just now it's divasang, the, uh, the day, right? The whole day. But writing here is a whole night, uh, but in this case, it's a, a verb already. Okay, so now we look at the sentence. Yeah, more or less the same. Okay, so, so we just skip it, right? So, tongue in regard to this, I, 
I pay respect to it, okay, to tam, to tam, okay. I mean, I put in bracket san, and then harisalana pata vipabhasa injective to it, which is golden colored and shining all over the earth. <clears throat> Aya Aja Gutta Viharemu Rating. Okay, same thing. Uh, right, you see, it's an optative. Uh, okay, so you see, it's got two parts. Gutta, right, being a guardian by you. Okay, Daya. Today, Aja, we will lift, right, Viharemu. We will lift. Uh, the whole night safely. Okay? So this is understood. So it seems that, you know, this is a kind of worship to the sun. <laughs> okay. Then next, eh? Ye Brahmana Vedago Sapadame or same thing also. Yeah? Same thing. Okay? So then yeah, same thing also. Huh? Yeah, Vedaku, right? They ejected the Brahmana. You see the Brahmin uh, who are well versed right, in all dharmas. Okay. Uh, those Brahmins or Brahmins are those well versed in, in a locative. Or oh, I should put locative <laughs> uh, because yesterday someone asked them because sometimes I put locative, accusative, but here standardized with locative in all dharmas. Who excel in all dhammas, right? They may namo. Okay. A close here. <clears throat> My homage, right? The salutation of me to them. You see? So just simply my homage to them. And okay. Here the the enclitic, right? And here the person, so they, uh, they, they protect. A monk is object. Okay. Uh, yeah, may they protect, okay? May they protect me, monk, okay? May they protect me. Okay, yeah, yeah, more or less the same. Yeah, but the difference is, moro wasang akapayiti, okay? Wasa akapayi, right? Is wasang. Wasang mean stay, okay? Stay. And then akapayi is the arrested person, singular. So it's max suitable, right? Max suitable, the staying. Okay, so now. Okay, so we have seen this. Nam, namo atu buddhana. Right, same thing also. Okay. Let them be homage to the blessed one. Right? Okay. Let there be homage to the supreme enlightenment of the Buddhas. Okay. Here yeah, the body. Body may enlightenment. Namo huh? imutana. Okay. PPP. Uh, Atu is understood. Right? That, let there be homage to those who have become free from bondage, right? Here become is a PPP. You can see that. Yeah, PPP. And Namo Imutia. Here's a noun. Let there be homage to the emancipation or liberation. Iman so paratangkatua. Okay. So katua means having met this protection or having recited this protection. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Moro wasa akapayi, right? So the peacock, right? What else? Uh, the peacock, <laughs> akapayi, uh, make suitable, uh, make suitable. Uh, wasa means staying. Uh, so this one is very literal, right? Make suitable, staying. Uh, in black, I went to sleep, you know, soundly or safely. So this is the meaning. Uh, so. Okay. 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 So, do you know this suttas? Vata parita. Okay. Vata parita. 
how to pronounce this? Uh, the quell, the quell, <laughs> the quell protection. <laughs> I find very difficult to read this. Uh, the quell. Uh, I think it's because of sound. Uh, the, you know, a kind of bird. You know, when you have quell, quell, quell like that. So eventually, the English word like quell protection, because uh, there is this suttas. But usually, we don't chant this suttas very often. But anyway, in the parite chanting, this what the parite is also very important. Okay. And this Vata Parit, yeah, is from the Charya Pitaka. Okay, it's also one of the, uh, what we call, uh, one of the, uh, you know, past life, past stories of the Buddhas, you know, while he was a Bodhisattva. <clears throat> and what is the significant advantages of these uh, Vata Parit? Okay, so it says that, you know, this, Protection is protect you from the danger of fire. Okay, from the danger of fire. <clears throat> okay, so so that you are free from all kind of uh, you know uh, flames, you know uh, all, all kinds of dangers related to fire. Okay, I hope that makes sense to you. <laughs> okay, so okay, so. It is found in the Charya Pitaka. Then, so this Charya Pitaka contains, uh, you know, the life of the Buddhas, you know, while he was a Bodhisattva. So in this, uh, in this Vata Parita, it says that, you know, once upon a time, <coughs> uh, oh, okay, it says that the Buddhas, Oh, I should say the word, the bodhisattvas, right? Was a quell, right? So when a forest fire was burning or out of control, and all creatures, you know, run away, right? Uh, so then a young baby, right? A quail. I don't know what you call this, a young, young quail, right? Uh, you know, left helpless in the nest. Then this young quail, right? Uh, you know, at that time, you know, because uh, it was helpless, right? So he determined an excellent statement of truth in his uh, present life, right? Then, of course, the forest fire passed over him in a spot of 16 lanes away. So he is free from the front fire. Okay, so. Okay, so in Myanmar tradition, <clears throat> yeah, I think this one is chanted mostly by the Myanmar, right? So basically, we uh, I, I don't chant this paritas uh, very often, right? So, okay, so let us uh, chant it, this paritas. Can you see? Eh? I just copy it just now. <clears throat> Ati loke silaguno sachang socheya nudaya tena sachena kahami sacha kiriya mutamang avat jetua dhamma balang saritua pubake jine sacha bala mavasaya sacha kiriya Maka Saham Santi Paka Apatana Santi Pada Avanchana Mata Pitacha Nikanta Jat Veda Pate Kama Saha Sache Kate Maiham Maha Pajalito Siki Vajesi Solasa Karisani Udakam patua yathasiki Satchena me samo nati Esa me sacha parami Okay, <clears throat> so this is a very short one and usually you know we also consider this as a as a as a mantra chanting right <laughs> mantra chanting but of course this mantra can be explained right Anyway, uh, when you talk about the mantra, I think some of you might be curious, what does mantra mean? Or sometimes the mantra is also called dharani, right? 
is um, we are talking about the mantra. Mantra is from man and tra, right? Two word, M A N, and then tra. Tra is a vehicle. It's a means. Okay, means. It's a transport. Okay, it's a vehicle. It's a means. So man is to think. It's a thinking, right? So transport is a kind of a vehicle or the means. You know, uplifting the mind. Or we can say that is mantra is a kind of transformation, okay? So that your mind can be lifted, you know, higher and higher. You understand? Uh, we are at the very deluded mind. As you recite the mantra, right? The mind uh, got lifted. You see, become, uh, you know, light. Uh, or we can say that when your mind lifted, it means that your mind become more and more concentrated. So this mantra, usually they are either in a very short verse, okay? Or they even contain the syllable. When I talk about the content of the syllable, they might contain the, the word like OM. Uh, of course, this is not Theravada. Yeah? But since we are dealing with, with mantra, then of course you have to know a little bit of what is mantra. <clears throat> so in, in the mantra, you know, the, there is uh, chanting of OM, right? Uh, so they said that this is the sound of the universe, right? So we can say that when you recite this OM, you can find a kind of tranquility, you see? So they said that when you recite this OM, you see, your mind got transformed, you see? Become more and more, you know, concentrated, okay? So this is, <clears throat> when you talk about the, uh, the chanting, you see, our, particularly this uh, and Bali or Sanskrit chanting, you also talk about the five sounds, right? Five sounds. What are these five sounds? You see, you are talking about, you know, usually when you talk about the five sounds together with the next sound, right? It brings about the, what they call, the transformation, right? For example, if you are not feeling well, right? Then you can chant certain sounds. Uh, together with the nasal sound that bring about the transformation. So for example, you are not feeling well, now you chant this sound, it can bring a kind of healing. Okay? Because when you recite this kind of sound together with the nasal sound, there is this, what you call, uh, vibration. Okay? Like, okay, when you, when you recite our Buddhist chanting, like, Bodham, right? Saranam. You see? You see, when I recite this, I focus my sound towards this white song together with the next song that bring the vibration. This vibration can heal your, your physical or the mental unpleasantness. Right? If you are not feeling well, you know, you can chant some of this sound. Eventually, this sound also become a mantra. <laughs> okay. So this is how I understood, you know, from, uh, you know, from the word mantra. Because in the ancient days, you see, people, the only resort, you know, for people to get their physical body and mind healed is through the recitation of certain sound. So we can say that this kind of sound chanting is also part of the ancient healing. But of course, this ancient healing is now disappeared. Right, but in those days, you know, this sounds healing that really makes you know people recover from certain very mild types of diseases or unpleasantness. Right? So as you recite this, it brings about the tranquilization because of the vibration. <clears throat> like you are going for a, a gentle massage, right? As you recite this, you are going like a you know sound spa like that. So that you feel, uh, you know, you feel comfortable after the chanting. So that, that is the purpose when you want to do chanting. It doesn't mean you have to chant loudly, but it's a method how you want to chant it. Uh, so some people chant chanting, you know, some people chant, that sounds very clear. Uh, uh, but I think that is not the purpose. You know, when we chant, you have to make sure that your chanting being the soothing, the effect, okay, of your body and mind. So after the chanting, you feel peace huh? and quiet. And immediately after chanting, you feel like, oh, I want to go and meditate. And you can, you know, enter into what we call the concentration easily. 
Okay, so that helps. Is usually when we when we can when when we have a lot of hindrances when we can't meditate. That is about that is because our mind is very heavy, right? Our body is heavy, the mind is heavy, right? So when you chant certain suttas, you know, it bring a certain soothing effect. So your mind got lifted, right? Become peace, become quiet. Okay, <laughs> so that is uh, the purpose of chanting. Okay. And of course, together with the understanding of the meaning. Okay, Ati Loke Silaguno Sachang Socheya Anudhaya. Okay, so you look at the Ati, Ati is the third person singular Loke, right? It's locative in the word, right? Loke in the word. Silaguna is from Sila and Guna. Guna means the virtue, right? Sila means the morality. So this translates like virtue or morality. So this is the inner genitive type brochure. Satcha is the truth, right? And socheya, anudhaya. So it's two words. Socheya means the purity. Anudhaya, oh, it has a meaning like anugampa, mean the compassion. But of course, when you have the anudhaya, also refer to loving kindness and compassion, right? In some contexts, you know, when they translate anudhaya, they translate compassion and loving kindness okay but that doesn't uh you know affect the translation okay so we, you just keep it like this <clears throat> okay so ati loke translate uh, the verb ati okay and then these are all the masculine uh no not mas they are all nominative singular such and also so they is anudhaya loke is located so here the translation there is Ati, okay? There is the virtue, sila, guna, of morality, such a truthfulness, sochay, purity, uh, compassion, right? Okay? Anudhaya, or loving kindness and compassion in the world, loke. Okay? I hope you get it, right? Uh, um, okay. And next, tena sachena kahami sacha kiriyang uttama. Okay, so it's sachena. By the truth, you look at the kahami. Kahami is the first person singular from the crew. Right, I will do. So this kahami in the sense of I will do, I'm determined to do, usually with punyang and kusala. It's, this one only occurs in the poetics. Huh? So, you know, this one, you don't find it very often in the prose, but you find it in the poetics only. So it means that I will do. Huh? Such a kiriyam utama is for such a kiriyam and then utama. Okay. So such a kiri is the segment of truth. And then utama is excellent. Okay. Okay. Satchena kahami. Okay. So Atena, Satchena. Okay, so by the power of truth, or just by the by the truth, by the power of truth. Okay. <clears throat> Kahami. Okay, so you see this Satcha Kiriyam Uttama. It's just like uh, Mangala Uttama, Mangalang Uttama. You see, that's why we chant Mangala Uttama, right? Uh, so you split the Sunday is Mangalang Uttama, right? Same thing. Such a Kiriyang Uttama or such a Kiriya Muttama. Okay. So when you, when you combine this U to M, right, this dot is removed. So you have to pronounce like such a Kiriya Muttama. Right? But now, because for the sake of analysis, I split the Sunday. So such a Kiriyang Uttama. Okay. So the utama is clearly adjective to such a career. So I will make, I will do, okay, an excellent, right, utama statement of truth. Okay. So. Avajetwa dhamma balam saritwa pubake jine. Okay, so avajetwa, right? It's from R and Brt. Okay, Brt. 
it means that incline or to turn, you know, to bring me to turn, to bend your mind. So it's a kind of inclination to bend your mind. So it means that the meaning means having, re but because this is a jurid, right? So you can take it like having observed or reflected, right? Dhamma balang, balang, okay? Balang. <clears throat> you see, the balang is a string, okay? Uh, not B A, if it is a long A, B A, long A here, L A is foolish. Okay. So this so you know, when you pronounce, you have to pronounce correctly. Huh? So this is Dhamma Balang. Huh? Not Dhamma Balang. Huh? You balang, you are, you are, you're scolding people, right? Foolish. Huh? Just like the Buddha scolding his disciple. You foolish one, you see, then bala. <laughs> okay. Uh, so Saritua. It's also a jury. You see, those anyway, tour, tour, you see, it's a jury. Okay. So sari is from the from the root, eh? smur, mean, uh, you know, smur, like uh, sati, you know, or smurti. Okay? In Sanskrit, smurti or sati mean mindfulness. So, okay, the meaning is having remembered, right? Bubake is from pub. K is an adjective, right? So, in this case, it's an accusative plural. But I take it as an adverb, mean formerly or ancient or living in the former times. And Gina, right, it's a victorious. Gina, Gina is, is from the root G, right, victory, right? So the victorious one, of course, here is referred to the Buddhist. Um, okay, Avajet tua dhamma balang, sarit tua pubake jine. Okay, having reflected. On the strain, on the strain, so this object, on the strain of Dhamma, right? Saritua Babake Jine. And having remembered, okay, the victorious one, like you said, the parola. <coughs> I'm sorry. Not yet now. Uh, living in the former time, yeah, I think it's accusative. Huh? Remember the vi victorious ones, huh? Uh, living in the former time, it means that you are remembered the past many, many uh, victorious ones, okay, or the ancient victorious ones. Okay, such a balang avasaya, you see, it's such a balang, right, avasaya. So avasaya is a journey, right, having dependent from the street, the real line, and then such a balang, right, it's such a balang. Uh, we have seen it, right? Such a career. And then such a career, right? We have seen that. And then Alkasaha is Aris the first person. Right? So it's a uh, Aris Kurumin to do. I will admit. Okay, now you see got two parts. Okay. Here, Akasaha, Aris, right? Admit it's a past thing. The statement of truth, such a career. Avasaya is a jiren. Okay. So depending on the power. You see, this if I translate it literally, it will be like this. Having dependent, having depend, okay, the strain of Dharma. I made the statement of truth. Or you also can say, I make the statement of truth depending on the power of truthfulness. Okay? This is a method of translation. Okay? So this is the use of the jury. So this depending, this depending is an is a absolutive, right? It's a jury. <clears throat> okay, now the second part. Santi Pakka, I think I should stop here now. <laughs> and we continue next week and together with Atanatiya Sutta. To me, Atanatiya Sutta is a very, very, very important sutta. Uh, if you look at the style of these, uh, par these Atanatiya Sutta, right, it's also very similar to the mantra. <laughs> it's also very similar to the mantra. Okay. So, anyway, uh, we shall. Uh, look at it. Huh?